Hi, this is Steve Harris. Welcome to the Emergency Home Power Battery Bank System. What I'm about to show you is just a little itty bitty demonstration. These are the last parts of the video from video number three. Now I got video number one, video number two, and video number three, all of which combined to be four and a half hours of video on how to build a home battery bank and a mobile battery bank, plus I tell you a mechanics level knowledge of how to select a battery for you. I mean, you'll have a better education on how to select a battery than a mechanic can tell you. So I'm going to show you right now the last part of the last part of the video where I show you everything and I show you how incredibly flexible it is. How, how the front can power the back, the back can power the front, you can power the home battery bank, battery bank can power the truck, back and forth. Okay, I'm just going to let you see it, but this is what you're going to get. Enjoy. Here is just another beauty shot of the truck kind of in the woods with sunshine going on the solar panel. It's lit up, it's inverter on, the battery's being charged. The battery's almost fully charged anyways. This is what you want. This is what you got. This is what I have just told you completely how to do. Now this system is very, very flexible. So I'm gonna show you some other tricks about flexibility. And, uh, oh, speaking of bad weather, <laughs> it was raining like crazy the other day. There is a reason why everything is underneath the lid, and that is because I can lift the lid up when it's warm and provide lots of airflow around the inverter and everything. And when it's raining, I can lower the lid down and put something in there to hold it up. It can be a block of wood. In this case, it is a Pepsi can. And as you can see, everything is nice and protected. It's not getting wet. It's got plenty of air circulation. It's providing power. And the one thing it wouldn't like is horizontal rain. So if it's raining in a hurricane, you're going to have to close her up and run a cable in. You're going to have to do something or wait for the rain to stop. But uh, it's got a lot of flexibility on it. It'll protect itself really good, but horizontal rain might not be one of them. Now let's say it is not raining and I have my truck outside my house, my battery bank is full and I want to run some power into my house. Now I have a battery bank inside the house and I want to move some energy from the battery bank in the truck to the battery bank in the house. I run the extension cable as you saw on the previous slide from the truck and I run it into the house through the garage and downstairs to where my battery bank is. Now this might be my home Little, my little home battery bank, but since my truck is there, I could charge up, I could run anything in my house off my truck. I could run anything I want to off my house off of the, not everything, not refrigerator stuff, but I could run all my stuff off, as I've shown you in the previous videos, off of this battery bank. But let's say I wanted to put some energy into the battery bank for a little while because I knew I was going to go hop in the truck, go to the grocery store, do some errands, go check something, go help out. So I was going to put more power into the bank in the truck as I was driving. I might want to dump some of that energy before I left into my home battery bank just so I had a little bit more power at home. It's very flexible on, on what you can do. This is just one example I'm giving you. And like I said, it's so flexible. I just showed you a picture of the cable running from the truck inside the house charging the battery bank inside the house. Well, let's say the batteries in my truck took a dump. They just died. I left the lights on or something happened or they're old and they are five years old in my truck right now. I got to replace them. Let's say I need to put energy into the batteries in the front of the truck because the truck won't start. Plug an electrical cable into your inverter in the back of the truck, run the power cable to the front of the truck, and use that little 30 amp charger. Just plug the 30 amp charger into the orange extension cord, 120 volts from the back of the truck, going to 120 volts to the front of the truck, going to the AC to DC charger, and 12 volts going into the batteries in the front of the truck. So I might put this on, leave it on for 15 minutes or a half hour, and then go and try and start my truck. Well, you might ask, well, Steve, why didn't you just use a pair of jumper cables to do that? Well, I might not have a pair of jumper cables, but I do. I got a pair of 21-foot ultra-thick jumper cables. They cost like $80 these days, so you might not have them. I got them when copper was cheaper. But I have a pair, and I took the jumper cables, and I hooked them up from the batteries in the front to the batteries in the back. And you can do this to recharge the batteries in the back. Let's say the batteries in the back were down and they were dead and your charge controller was dead for whatever reason. It wasn't charging. Or you want to charge the batteries in the back quicker than you could charge them through the 30 amp charge controller. 
take your jumper cable, hook it on the front batteries of the truck, start the truck, take the, the cable and hook it onto the two posts of the batteries in the back, and the front of the truck will be now charging the back of the truck. The reverse is also true. Let's say the batteries in the front were dead, the batteries in the back are good, hook up the jumper cables, clip them on the back, clip them on the front, energy will now flow from the batteries in the back to the batteries in the front. Now I wouldn't really try to start my truck through the jumper cables going to the batteries in the back. It might. It's better just to hook it up, let some energy flow between them, get some energy in the front batteries, and then start the pickup truck. Like I said, extremely flexible with what you can do with a few little tools. And as you can see, the jumper cables just clamp on to the big battery post that I left open on the batteries in the back of the truck and I just clamped them on to the batteries in the front of the truck and away you go. Two is one, one is none, three is for me, four is even more, five makes sure I get back alive, six is a great mix and seven is heaven. So I always have a spare inverter. In this case I have a Cobra 800 watt inverter. Notice it's mounted on a, on a board and I can clamp it on to the front batteries of the vehicle. Now let's say the batteries in the back needed a little bit of a charge for some reason. I needed to move energy to the back. I can just clamp this inverter here onto the front of the pickup truck and I run the extension cable from the front of the truck, 120 volts, to the back of the truck. Again I take my 30 amp charger and I plug it onto the batteries and turn it on and I dump energy from the front of the truck to the back of the truck and I do this at a rate of 30 amps. Again you can do this, this is you know two is one, one is done. This is covering your rear end. The permutations are endless with what you can do and how you can back yourself up and self rescue. One thing you might have noticed that I want to make very clear to you, I love putting my inverters onto wood boards because it allows me to set them down and they won't short out anything. They, the, the case is ground, it won't short to positive, it won't interfere with anything, it won't short anything else out, it won't scratch up the truck because it might want to fall down on, around the fender and scratch it on the way down. I always put my inverters on a piece of wood. It is just darn handy and it works good. Here you can see the inverter is actually sitting on top of the power distribution center right next to the battery with the cable plugged in running to the back of the truck or it could be running inside my house. The entire back of the truck could be dead and I might need to run some power into the house to run a sump pump or run my uh, lights and charge my batteries. Hey, here's my inverter. It's plugged into the, the battery in the front of the car. This is exactly what we did in my TSP show of how to power your house from your car. Again, huge flexibility with what you can do. <laughs> and again, here's the inverter sitting on top of the battery, which is really convenient. You can see the red cable going to the right, the black cable going to the left, and the inverter is right on top of the battery. You would never ever do this without the piece of wood because that case, that metal case on the inverter is ground. That is the same as the black lead. If that would slide up against the red battery post without the piece of wood there, it would be sparks and short circuit and fire and all sorts of nasty things. Again, I am heavily advocating you put your inverter on a nice piece of wood. And yet another example, let's say the inverter in the back of the truck died and I need to run power someplace. I just take my backup inverter and this could be a 1600 watt inverter on a piece of wood, a 2500 watt, a 1000 watt inverter, an 800 watt inverter as I show here. It could be a 400 watt inverter. It doesn't matter. And it's sitting on a piece of wood and it's sitting on top of the batteries and it's clamped onto the batteries in the back and I know it's not going to short circuit anything out if someone pulls on a cable and the inverter falls down and hits one of the terminals. It's not going to do anything because it's on a nice solid piece of wood and it's insulated from everything below it. Now this is really going to get you going with possibilities. What is this? This is a little 120 volt to 12 volt power supply. Okay, you plug it into 120 volts and it gives you a cigarette lighter plug output with the ability for 6 amps. So as it says here, that's approximately 70 watts. And what am I going to use this for? What good is this? 
Well, let's say I had something in my house that ran off of 12 volts and only 12 volts for whatever reason. And I really didn't want to have to go down to the car or the truck to use whatever that thing was on 12 volts. Here you can see my kitchen table again. I have 120 volts running to it through the orange extension cord from the battery bank in the back of the truck or the battery bank in the basement. It is powering a 5 watt compa compact fluorescent light bulb. It is powering up my Android cell phone and into this I have plugged in the 120 volt to 12 volt power supply. But like I said, it is a cigarette lighter output. And it'll give you about six, five, six amperes of output. Now, what might I have that I want to use in a disaster that's only 12 volts? A CB radio. Here's a little hand, handheld CB radio. I can listen to CB all over the place, truckers on the highway and everything else, but it's 12 volts only. It runs off of AA batteries, rechargeable or alkaline, but it also runs off of a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. It's a low wattage device. It's like three or four watts and the DC to AC to DC converter is 70 watts. So it's not going to tax it at all. Uh, you could, for some reason, one of someone in your family has to charge your cell phone and they might only have their car charger with them in their car when they're at your apartment and they have to charge their cell phone. Well, this is the perfect way to do it. Again, how to power your house from your car. Your car might be 300 feet away in the parking lot. You might be running an extension cord to the third floor balcony of your apartment actually drop the cord down from the balcony don't throw it up going through your sliding door and into your house then you got your 120 volts from your inverter from your car 300 feet away you're charging your cell phone as i am you got a light going but your father-in-law uh, i need to charge my cell phone and all i got is the charger i had in the car well now you got 100 now you got 12 volts from the car going to 120 volts running 300 feet or 500 feet or more up to your apartment and getting converted back to 12 volts so you can use whatever you have to use this little power supply is on battery one two three four it is not expensive at all it is very flexible and it's a good tool to have and again, it is 12 volts, and there's one cigarette lighter plug there. You might have more than one thing. So I plugged in our famous four-way uh, cigarette lighter extender from one into four, and into it I plugged the CB radio. And let's say your father-in-law, he all he had was a DC charger. There is a 12-volt USB DC charger going to the USB cable and charging my Android phone off of 12 volts that is coming from a 100 foot extension cable plugged into the back of the truck right now. As I have been trying to show you, the number of permutations you could actually do is endless. There's hundreds of different things you can do because you got batteries in the front, batteries in the back, inverter in the back, inverter that can clamp onto the front, two inverters that can go, go into the back. You can run 100 and 20 volts anywhere you want go to a dc an ac to dc battery charger charge up a battery in a house charge up a battery on another car you can go from 12 volts in the truck to 120 volts from an extension cord back down to 12 volts in your apartment or in your house and run something else to 12 volts off of it you can Jump, you can charge your batteries in the back of your truck from the front of the truck with a set of jumper cables. You can do the reverse. You can charge the front of the truck from the back of the truck with jumper cables. You can lower the lid when it's raining. You can put out a solar panel. Dog, Cats and dogs living with each other. What you can do is up to your imagination. And if you've done something neat with this, send me an email. Send me a photograph. I would really like to see what you are doing or what you think about this. And this is the end. You have reached the end of part three. If you have not watched part one or part two, please do so. A lot of information was, especially in part one, was given out that is very, it pertains very much to things I talked about in part three. Uh, I know you might have just jumped right to this one and wanted to see it, but go back and listen to part one and part two because there's different things in each of them that pertain to what you just watched, and there's things in part three that pertain to part two. 
Uh, again, my name is Stephen Harris. Everything you saw in this entire video is available. You can go up to battery1234.com. I have pictures of everything up there. I tell you if you can buy it at Walmart, at Radio Shack. I got links to it up there on Amazon. You can buy it from Amazon if you want. You can buy it anywhere you so desire. I am about enabling you. So it's not just me teaching you what to do and telling you what I have done and being an example and then giving you the permutations of it. That's just putting knowledge between your ears. I want to enable you. So I want you to know where to go and get those things. And then once you have those things, I want you to be able to see how to use those things with stuff like the video that you just watched. My thanks goes out to Jack Spearco and the Survival Podcast. One hell of a man, one hell of an empire, and just an absolutely great guy. Thank you very much, Jack, for having me part of your show. And you were the encouragement and the suggestion that I do this series of videos. And I've done them. Uh, if you anyone out there has any questions, email me at the email you've seen, support at knowledgepublications.com. My email, of course, is all over battery1234.com and solar1234.com. All of my previous shows that you might have listened to or not have listened to uh, on with Jack on the Survival Podcast, plus my free family preparedness class. If you like what I've done with energy, you'll be blown away with what I've done with preparedness. I really flip everything on its head, and you go, you just you'll slap your forehead and go, "Why didn't I think of that?" It's really great hands-on stuff. No MREs, no dehydrated junk, no survival gadgets and wadgets, anything. It's just stuff that you can get from your local store. So there's a wealth of information about that at solar1234.com. You want any books or DVDs on hydrogen, solar, fuel cells, biomass, uh, gas, the gasification, converting wood chips into fuel, as a wind power, uh, hydropower, you name it. All those books and DVDs are at my corporate website of USH2. You want to know more about me? www.stephenharris.net. It'll lead you to all of my websites that I have and give you background on me. Again, thank you very much. You guys are fabulous. Thank you for purchasing this video. And uh, if you didn't purchase this video and it's pirated from someplace, uh, go to Battery1234 and buy some stuff on my links, okay? Or just go say, here, Steve, and, and pay for the video. <laughs> Anyways... Thank you very much, guys. You're wonderful students. Please let me hear from you. Best of luck, and I hope this really works for you. Uh, I, I would like to say to the kids out there, take a good, you talk about a role model, this is a role model, don't be like me. You know? I mean, God gave me a body, ability to play baseball, and that's what I want to do. Give me everything. I just... Well, I want to start giving something back. It seems to me like all I've done is just take, have fun and take. And I want to start trying to, like, working with Baylor Hospital on the donor program. 
stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. I just, I, I, like I said, I, I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to make up.